we really like value semantics in Go. We're not a pure value semantic language like a functional programming language would be. We have our pointer semantics. What the pointer semantics are going to say, and I'm going to show it to you, is don't operate on your own copy of the data. Sometimes that's too inefficient. What we're going to do instead is not store our own copy of the integer, but store our own copy of an address that points to this variable over here. We're going to what we're going to do is make a copy and store the address of something. That's the data that we're going to pass by value, the address. And then through that pointer, indirectly, indirectly, be able to mutate state outside the scope of our, our box and in somebody else's. Now, there's a lot of efficiency with this. I didn't make copies of this data. We're sharing it across these program boundaries. But if I have lots of pointers sharing it, and this goes off the deep end, it could be much harder to figure out who did it. And it just makes things a lot more complex sometimes, though you can see the efficiency of this because what I'm making copies of are the addresses, which is much smaller than the data itself. Now, there's guidelines around this at some point, but we've got to just look at the mechanics right now. So let's go back and look at the pointer semantic. So you can see, in this case, the function main also is storing the value of 10 inside its local variable count. And you can see we can display the value of and the address of count like we did before. But I want you to look at the function call. Notice we're not giving increment its own copy of the integer. We're giving increment its own copy of the address to, to that integer. This is that pointer semantics. And in order to do that, I want you to look at the variable declaration on line 25. Notice that this function has changed its declaration here. Look, what this is saying is I want my own copy of an integer. I don't care whose, just give me an integer. This is saying I want my own copy of an address. I want you to take the idea of this star operator and bind it to the idea of an address. It's physical data that must be stored inside that box for increment in order for increment to be able to operate on it. So that star says address. And that's why you see the ampersand here on line 17. So we're matching the data requirement. But here's the problem, OK? I wish we could just say star. I really do. But if we come back to the board, all right, the star in the syntax is what's saying that I want an address. It's the star in the syntax that's saying address. The problem is this. Having the address to something in memory it's not enough. Because if all you have is an address, you don't have the other part of the information you need, which is what is the data at that address? Is it an int? Is it a user? Is it a request? What is it? And the problem is, is that if you don't know what this data is, you don't know how to read it, and you don't know how to write it. And if you read it and or write it incorrectly, then you're going to have massive bugs in your program. So the problem here is it's not enough to just ask for an address. You have to ask for an address, and you have to make it clear that at that address, there better be a value of some specific type. 
because that is what I expect to read and write. So if we come back to the syntax, you can't just say star. It's not enough information. What you have to say is the address that is associated with some piece of data that is, in this case, an int. So basically, what we're doing is either we're saying, I want an int, or I want the address to an int. I want a user, or I want the address to a user. You still have to specify what type of data you want. The question is, do you want your own copy, or do you want shared access? Do you want your own copy, or do you want somebody to share their, theirs? I mean, sharing is caring, so this makes your apps a lot nicer. But again, once you start sharing data, we open ourselves up to really nasty side effects. But this is the hard part in programming in these types of languages, where if you don't use pointers in the right place, you're making your life worse. If you use pointers in certain places, you're making your life worse. Um, and it takes an entire day to talk about that. But right now, we're just focusing on mechanics. So this is why pointers get confusing. Because we're using the star operator on the type information to say, I don't want my own copy. I want yours. I don't want my own. I want yours. And then we use the same star operator to read the data. Come back out here. Because what now happens with a pointer variable is we kind of have three levels, if you think about it. Okay. This pointer variable has three levels. Okay. It has a value, which we know is the address. And I can say ink. And ink's going to give me the value of ink. What's in the box? This address. The address of what? The address of this. But it's a variable, so I can say ampersand ink, which means what? Well, I want the address of where this box is in memory. That's kind of confusing. And then you're like, well, Bill, I don't want to alter the value of this. I don't want to change this. Bill, I want to change this. How do I get here? That's when we use that star operator again. And that star says the value that the pointer points to. This is the value of, the address of, and the value that the pointer points to. We sometimes want to call this a dereferencing, but ideally what we're saying is let's do something to the value that the pointer points to. Now we can start to manipulate this. So if we come back to the code, you see, if I leave the star out, now I'm saying increment the value that's inside of ink, which is an address. That's not what I want to be mutating. I want to mutate the value that the pointer points to. I want to reach out across this pro pro program boundary and get to that other value, and, and specifically this one here. And so um, obviously, I altered that. but. If you look at the output now, you see this is the address of count. And then if we ask, what is the value of ink? What's inside the box? The address is match. Because all pointer variables store an address. That is what their job is. Their job is to store the address. But we can start to manipulate state outside of this function. In fact, you can see that this is what main looked like before the call to increment. That's what main looks like after the call to increment. We've now mutated state outside of our little sandbox here. And sharing gives us a level of efficiency, but can open itself up to some really nasty, nasty things.